Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. We're back again with more Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous. This time, second place on the poll regarding what builds I should work on for this week. Alchemist combined with Legend. Another one that honestly I didn't feel like would be so high, but let's go ahead and get into it. So I was trying to think to myself, what's the character I can emulate who loves to combine bombs and potions? And once it popped into my head, of course it was the obvious answer. Gerald of Rivia from one of my all time favorite video game series, The Witcher. Of course, this guy is the closest picture I could get to him. So we'll go ahead and move forward. And as already mentioned, we're gonna be an alchemist, specifically a grenadier, we'll be human. Background, we'll go regional, Alkenstar alchemist. We're gonna get a plus one bonus to damage with alchemist bombs and alchemist items. And then for attribute point distribution, dump strength, we absolutely do not need it. We want dexterity as high as we can because the bombs do touch attacks. So dexterity is going to assist with us hitting with the bombs. Also, if you start out with a 20 in dexterity, you don't need to touch dexterity again. Between the belt you get that's gonna improve dexterity and the weapons you should be holding that are gonna improve your ability with touch attacks, you should have all the buffs you need to be able to hit enemies with your bombs. A Couple of more points into constitution just to ensure we don't get one-shotted. Intelligence is going to be the attribute that we steadily increase throughout the level ups. It now is going to help with your damage for your fire bombs. And if you decided you wanted to delve into some of the other bombs that have additional abilities, this is going to help to ensure you can uh, hit enemies with whatever effect you want to hit them with. We're gonna leave wisdom at 10 and then a few points into charisma just to make sure that we can persuade people. And now as far as attribute points, the world is your oyster. You start with a bunch of skills that you have class skills in and you start with five points. But like I said, we're going to be increasing intelligence steadily. So honestly, you don't need to limit yourself to skills that you actually have a class skill in. Whatever it is that's important to you, go ahead and put it in there. We're going to have 40 levels getting skill points at every single level. Whatever you decide that you need, you will absolutely have. Me personally, I definitely want persuasion. I definitely want perception. Uh, it makes sense to me that the Witcher knows about magic. He knows about the world. Definitely open a lot of lock, uh, lock chests and doors so he knows about trickery. But again, whatever combination works for you, you can go ahead and run with that. And at level one for your first feat, let's go ahead and get point blank shot. And then right after that, pick up precise shot. So this is going to ensure that you're not taking a negative four penalty on your attack rolls when you're throwing bombs. And then for spells, um, you'll definitely want shield reduced person is going to increase your dexterity uh, with a plus two size bonus so it's going to help you hit with your bombs easier expeditious retreat is basically haste without the additional attack enlarged person is nice right now in the game because Sela is probably going to be one of your best characters and she's going to benefit heavily from enlarged person and then you can make a choice between either cure light wounds if you want somebody else on the team who can provide some additional healing or bomber's eye if you would rather focus on getting an insight bonus on attack rolls when you are throwing your bombs it's up to you i per i personally go with bomber's eye right now and then for deity, we're gonna go with God Claw. So God Claw is the Hell Knight Order's deity, and it's really a pantheon of five of the deities: Iomade, Torag, Arori, Abadar, and Asmodeus. And I really like this because in the Witcher series, Geralt, even though he doesn't express like a specific deity that he worships, or he doesn't really necessarily join a religion. He's praying a lot at these different stones and drawing power from them and deeply believes in meditation. So to me, he comes off as someone who deeply respects religion, even if he hasn't made a choice to side with a particular group. And so I like the idea of he respects four or five different ones, but he doesn't necessarily place one above another. I think that's consistent with his character. And then for alignment, we're gonna choose lawful good 
which again, at least the way I play him, I feel like that's consistent with his character. Even though he is always surrounded by chaos, he never goes into a city really trying to mess things up or cause a bunch of chaos. It's just that things happen, things go wrong, and he ends up being involved in the situation. But oftentimes, when he's in a city, he's attempting to be lawful. And in his mind, he is doing the right thing or, or what needs to be done. Very rarely do you see situations where it seems like he's just purposefully screwing somebody over for no reason. All right, I think we'll go with the more grizzled look he gets in Wild Hunt. That's about as close as I can get to it with this character creator. Reserved at level two, get Cognitant Token. It is going to increase your intelligence by plus four and give you a plus two natural armor bonus, while at the same time giving you a negative two penalty to strength. You can mitigate that by using a buff to strength, like bull strength. You're not going to do that right now, but later on when you're like level seven or eight and Sila already has a strength or Sila or whoever your tank is already has a strength belt where they don't need you to cast bull strain on them. It'll allow you to be able to cast it on yourself and make sure your strength isn't so low that you end up having inventory issues or things of that nature. And for your level two spell, just take between Cure, Light Wounds, and Bomber's Eye, take whichever one you didn't get at level one. For your level three feet, grab Weapon Focus, Bomb. And for your level four attribute, increase intelligence and continue to increase intelligence during all of your level ups. For your level four discovery, get Explosive Bomb. So it's gonna make your bombs have a splash radius of 10 feet rather than five feet. And creatures that take a direct hit from an Explosive Bomb catch fire taking 1d6 points of fire damage each round until the fire is extinguished. For your level four spell, pick up Bark Skin. It's gonna give your tank a plus two enhancement bonus to natural armor, and then that bonus is gonna increase all the way to plus five at 12th level. This is definitely a fantastic defensive boost for your tanks, and it allows them to use something else other than natural armor buffs for their necklace slot. If you don't have a person on your team that can cast bark skin, then they're going to need the plus three, plus four, plus five natural armor bonuses on their necklace. With this, they can do something else that is gonna increase their attack and damage. At level five, get extra bombs and then grab blur. At level six for your discovery, take infusion. So all of those uh, great spells that you begin getting, like Bark Skin, Blur, things of that nature, usually the Alchemist can only apply it to himself. With Infusion, it's going to allow you to take all of those spells and then apply it to other people. So if it's more important to you, you could actually take this earlier at level two or four if you wanted to be able to cast buffs on your team ASAP. But for me, it was more important for my alchemist to be solidified first before I start throwing out buffs to everybody, which is why I grabbed it later. For your level six spell, go ahead and grab false life. Again, even though usually this spell is only personal, as an alchemist with infusion, you can cast it onto your tanks, both false life and false life greater. At level seven, grab rapid shot, but don't activate it yet. We're just grabbing the feet. And for your level seven spell, get protection from arrows communal. And then for your level eight discovery, get fast bombs. So fast bombs will allow you to throw more than one bomb in a single round. So if you combine fast bombs and rapid shot and haste, you're going to get be able to throw a lot more bombs than you usually would. And for your level eight spell, grab haste for your level nine feet, get extra bombs. Because now we are able to throw more than one bomb in a round, it's gonna allow you to burn through the amount of bombs you have much faster. So that's why around this time, you wanna take a few feats of extra bombs to try to level that out. For your level nine spell, take C Invisibility Communal. For your level 10 Discovery, take Choking Bomb. So around level 10, you're going to be getting into Act 3, which means you're gonna see a significant difficulty spike in the game. It's really nice to have more crowd control for the fights that are coming up. And Choking Bomb is gonna allow you to nauseate creatures. And because of your sky high intelligence that you're gonna to continue to increase over time, you should definitely be able to hit their fortitude saves when you're using this bomb. 
At level 10, take False Life Greater. At level 11, get Improved Critical. Bomb. And at level 11, get Delay Poison Communal. For your level 12 discovery, you've been using Cognitogen, but now you have access to that upgrade and you have access to Greater Mutagen, I would actually recommend you switch over to Greater Mutagen, which is gonna allow you to buff your dexterity and constitution. I say that because around level 12, you still don't have access to the really, really nice items that are gonna heavily buff your ability to do touch attacks. And you might be experiencing an issue landing your bombs on some of the tougher enemies. So that buff to dexterity is actually going to help you. Whereas the buff that you're getting from intelligence, it'll be much, much more important later on during the game. For your level 12 spell, grab Displacement. So at level 13 for your feet, thought I should make a quick note. You'll notice that I haven't been picking up any of the bow and arrow feats. And that's because they do not apply to bombs. And in the case of Deadly Aim, it's actually a penalty for using it while you're trying to throw bombs because it's gonna apply the penalty on ranged attack rolls, but does not give a buff to your damage rolls with bombs. Um, cluster shots and mini shot will assist you when you're using a bow and arrow, but they don't do anything for you while you're throwing bombs. Me personally, I like devoting my feats to throwing bombs and um, basically accepting the fact that my arrows are just not going to do that much damage because usually I'm firing my arrows at trash mobs that I'm going to let the team wipe out and then I'm using bombs when it's the hardcore fights where I, or when it's a situation where I need to take a target out quickly. And then over time, you're going to have so many bombs that you don't have to even worry about it. You'll just be throwing bombs whether it's trash mobs or not because you have so many, it doesn't really matter. That's my personal play style. But if you're the type of person who you like being effective with both bombs and your bow and arrow, then it's gonna make sense for you to take out some of these extra bombs and instead grab cluster shots, mini shot, and snapshot if you like. Remember, all three of them will not work with bombs. I do not recommend you pick up Deadly Aim. Again, it's uh, going to penalize you with no buff when you are using bombs. Uh, outside of that, for me, my next feat at level 13 is gonna be Critical Focus. And then your level 13 spell, Stone Skin Communal. At level 14, I get Extend Potion. So as an alchemist, you're gonna be able to, of course, make your own potions. And that means all these spells that you're beginning, like Bark Skin and Stone Skin and things of that nature, you'll be able to make potions out of them. And with this feat, you'll be able to extend how much time they will last for you and your party when they use them. At level 14, grab Spell Resistance. At level 15, grab Extra Bombs. And for your level 15 spell, get Death Ward. At level 16, go ahead and get Greater Cognitogen. So Greater Cognitogen is a prerequisite for you getting the grand version. Usually if we were just taking this to level 20, we absolutely would not have gotten Greater Mutagen. We would have just went straight through this. But because you're doing Legend and you should be getting the full version of Legend at level 17, that's basically going to stack another 17 levels on top of your build. So you're not really losing time because when you're able to choose your next discovery, you're gonna get several discovery options in a row, essentially. So it's no problem in this particular build. For your level 16 spell, go ahead and grab Legendary Proportions. For your level 17 feet, so like I said, at level 17, you're going to get many, many feats basically back to back to back to back to back after you go ahead and pick up Legend. So I think this is a good opportunity to go ahead and solidify the effectiveness of your bombs and take a quick sidebar from just getting extra bombs. So at level 17, let's go ahead and get ability focused bombs and you can grab heal. For your level 18 discovery, get Grand Cognitogen and you should be using the intelligence and wisdom version of it. And for your level 18 spell, get greater invisibility. For your level 19 feet, get elemental focus, fire. At level 20, for your grand discovery, get awakened intellect. 
It's going to increase your intelligence score by two points. And then for your discovery, get enhanced potion. Any potion that the alchemist drinks functions at a caster level equal to his class level. Then you're going to get another discovery. Take preserve organs. It's going to give you a 25% chance that the critical hit or sneak attack made against you is negated and damage is instead rolled normally. And then take whatever you like for the very final spell. All right, now that we've went through the first round of 20 levels, let's go ahead and take a look at the mythic options. Add mythic level one, go ahead and get bit of fun. It's going to give you the ability to put a mirror image spell on yourself and give you a plus three circumstance bonus to all skill checks. And then for your first mythic level, get ascendant element, fire. For mythic level two, get improved critical, bomb. And then at mythic level three, it's going to automatically make you a legend. All right, so now back at character level ups, we've already completely maxed out Grenadier. So we're going to stick with potions and bombs though and go up to Rogue. And then we're going to do Underground Chemist. The big advantage of Underground Chemist is at level four, precise splash weapons. And Underground Chemist can deal sneak attack damage with splash weapons. So all those great bombs that we've been building up, now they're going to do sneak attack damage in addition to everything that they've been doing. And we're going to get some of these fantastic rogue talents that are actually going to count for our bombs. Let's dig into it. At level 21, grab accomplished sneak attacker. And for your first rogue talent, get fast stealth. Now that you're doing sneak attack damage with your bombs, it's actually very advantageous for you to be stealth. So you want to make sure that you can move regularly when you do that. At level 23, take Greater Elemental Focus, Fire. At level 25, get Tiring Critical. At level 26, get Weakening Wound. At level 27, get Hammer the Gap. At level 28, get Slippery Mind. At level 29, I, get, I go back to getting extra bombs. Since we've already gotten tiring critical and exhausting critical is better, you could get exhausting critical, but eh, to me, your bombs and everything else is going to be so great. You're going to be taking out these enemies left and right. I don't need my criticals against them to be any better. So I just go for extra bombs at level 30, take crippling strike. And then at level 31 and for the rest of the level up feats, I go for extra bombs for your level 32 rogue talent. Take double debilitation. So double debilitation allows you to use two debilitating injuries. As part of being an underground chemist, you're going to get access to three debilitating injuries, bewildered, disoriented, and hampered. Bewildered is the one that's really, really going to help you. Around this level, it's basically going to put a negative eight penalty to AC for an enemy that you hit with your uh, sneak attack damage. And your bombs are already targeting touch AC, which is going to be the lowest AC type for most of the enemies that you face. So taking a negative eight penalty on top of that is just massive for most enemies and allows you to easily target them with your bombs, which is why we don't put a whole lot of effort into leveling up dexterity at the level one. Usually your bombs should be able to get through no problem. And it's just a question of how much damage are they actually going to do once they get through. With double debilitation, we're also going to add disoriented, which means the targets are going to take a negative eight penalty on their attack rolls as well. Of course, our tanks are going to significantly appreciate that. Hampered is of course available, but I just find, I, I never find reducing a target speed to be all that helpful unless you're playing in turn base and then you're able to target an enemy before it really starts running up on your team. But in real time with pause, this is not, to me, this really isn't all that useful. Up to you. Okay, so now we're at level four. Um, just to keep in mind, this is basically the stopping point when you first get legend. Again, you're gonna get it around level 17. Uh, if I remember correctly, it basically doubled my levels all the way up to 34. And then the other six levels that you need to get to 40, that's when you have to go out into the world and basically try to finish up side quests and other things that you can do to get those last levels. Even then, you're going to level up 
quicker than your party members, meaning you're going to hit level 40 faster than your party members are going to hit level 20. So you're going to be able to max out everything and get the maximum amount of power from this mythic path relatively quickly. Um, now, going back to this, at level 34 for your rogue talent, I like Dispelling Attack. It's going to strip off some of the buffs that the enemy has when you're able to hit them with sneak attack damage. And again, you want to be invisible as much as possible, so you're doing sneak attack damage as often as possible. For your level 36 rogue talent, get Wearying Strike. And at level 32... At level 38, you've really taken most of the rogue talents that are really, really going to help you. So at this point, you can really choose anything. I take Trailblazer. It's going to make you immune to difficult terrain. Not great, but it's there. And then also just wanted to show you the skill listing at level 40. So I decided to just stop increasing skills once they get up to level 30, because I figured the number should be way more than anything that I need to be able to pass a skill check. But as you can see, using that method with no problem, we've got all the skills up to just massive, massive numbers. So all in one character, you should be able to do just about anything. And again, for a level 40, you can choose whatever rogue talent you want. Me, I'm going to take slow reactions. Okay, so now that we went through the levels, let's take a look at the spell book. Um, couple of castings of shield. Expeditious Retreat, Reduce Person to uh, give me that size bonus to Dexterity, allow me to hit my bombs easier, and then Bomber's Eye is going to give you a small boost to attack rolls with your bombs as well. And once again, since we took Infusions, all of these could be applied to other party members. So we could give our uh, tanks a shield bonus to AC. Sila, for example, if you have her with a two-handed weapon, she's going to benefit from that plus four shield bonus to AC. Um, your archers could benefit from having reduced person and getting a uh, bonus to their dexterity. At level two, Bark Skin is fantastic for all your frontline fighters. Blur is fantastic for all your frontline fighters. Uh, this is going to give you a buff to uh, natural armor. This is going to give you concealment, which is a 20% miss chance. And then False Life is going to give them temporary hit points. So all of these great for your tanks or to make you more tanky if you're trying to do a run where you have less party members. Um, protection from arrows, resist energy is for um, if you know what type of energy you're about to face, that's definitely helpful. Delay poison is an absolute must, especially later on during the game. A lot of enemies will try to poison you. Displacement is going to give you a 50% miss chances if you had total concealment. Very, very nice again for your tanks, but it does only last one round per level as opposed to blur, which is going to last one minute per level. Remember, you don't have the mythic feats that allow you to extend the time of the uh, buffs. So you're going to have to use these buffs regular. They're going to last most of them one minute per level. Um, and then, of course, we also have haste on. It's going to give you a, a great speed buff, which is great for running around. And it's going to allow you to make an additional attack when you're doing all full attack. Very, very good stuff. And you've got seeing visibility communal. Later on, you should be using true seeing communal, but your alchemist won't have access to that spell. So you're going to need your cleric or somebody else to make sure that's casted on the entire party. There are a lot of enemies that use concealment and invisibility in the game. False Life Greater is going to give an, an even larger temporary hit point boost for your tanks in your front line. False Life Greater and False Life do stack. So if you have an alchemist, you should be casting both on whoever is supposed to be the main tank for the party. Death Ward is an absolute must by probably around level 13. Basically, when you're just about to get into Act 4, a lot of enemies will try to put death effects on you. So you need to have that casted on your entire front line or any archers that you have close to up front uh, because you're trying to use snapshot with them. Then we have a lot of slots dedicated to greater invisibility. Once you become a legend and you're able to get underground chemist, being invisible is going to allow you to do sneak attack damage with your bombs, which is going to be a significant damage upgrade for you. So you want to be invisible as much as possible. 
Then at level five, Stone Skin Communal is fantastic protection for your entire party. Diamond Dust is very, very plentiful. As you can see, I've got 1800 of it and I didn't buy a whole lot of it. So you don't really have to worry about being too uh, reserved about using Diamond Dust, at least by the time you get to late act three, early act four. So you don't necessarily wanna just be throwing it around everywhere, but you don't have to be careful with it. And then spell resistance is going to give great protection for your entire party. It makes their uh, spell resistance equal to 12 plus your caster level. We've got seven castings of it because we have six party members and we have to cast it on each one of them separately. And then one additional one because we have Sela, she has a horse and the horse needs it too. Since in my playthrough, the horse really served as the main tank. And then finally at level six, you have Legendary Proportions, a huge damage buff for any of your melee oriented characters. Sila loves it when I put this on her. And heal is just so that there's somebody else who can just throw out a heal if one is needed for a particular situation. I just picked Dragon Kind one because we had to take a spell during that time, but it's not something that we were really using this build. As far as inventory, unfortunately, I don't have a lot of things really specced out for someone who's supposed to be an alchemist, but I do have the um, Har Haramaki, which is giving you a plus four insight bonus on range touch attack rolls. So there are a lot of different items like this out in the world where it'll specifically give you a buff on touch attacks. Um, oftentimes they're daggers. So that's again, part of the reason why I didn't take a lot of the archery feats as an alchemist, if you're focusing on being able to throw out as many bombs as possible, especially if you get to that point where you basically know you're gonna have way more bombs than you need before you have to uh, rest again, it makes more sense to go ahead and put daggers in these slots so that you can get those buffs to touch attack and make sure those bombs are hitting than it does to have a, a bow in your hand that is not really doing anything. Um, beyond that, these gloves, if I do a critical hit, the enemy is going to suffer a negative two penalty on saving throws against mind affecting conditions. Nanio definitely appreciates that. The belt is going to increase my dexterity. So you, we got a pretty decent score on dexterity. It's going to give a plus eight um, to our touch attacks. Um, then beyond that, we have this magnifying amulet, which is going to give a plus two bonus to my highest ability score. So that would be intelligence. And then it's going to get another plus six bonus from my headband. The goggles are going to give me a plus 10 to persuasion, which I don't really need, but it does give me a plus one insight bonus on attack and damage rolls against outsiders. Uh, the lone wolf cloak gives me a plus three three bonus to damage rolls on ranged attacks and a plus two bonus on all saving throws. And that is for the most part, um, all that's really great on the item side. Like I said, I didn't get some of the really, really nice items that would help an alchemist more. Um, if we take a quick look at the abilities on the character sheet, just want to note this. So I already talked about the bewildering injury, which is going to allow you to significantly lower their AC and disorienting injury, which is going to al allow you to lower their attack rolls. But what's also going to impact them is the strikes that we picked up. So crippling strike is going to take off two points of strength every time we hit them with a sneak attack. Uh, wearing strike is going to take off a point of constitution. And then slow reactions is going to ensure if we um, hit them with a sneak attack, they cannot make attacks of opportunity. And then weakening wound is going to reduce their damage reduction by the um, level of our character, which honestly, I haven't looked at it yet. I don't know if it reduces by 20 or if it does actually literally reduce by 40, which would be insane. <laughs> so um, with all this together, it makes our bombs extremely powerful, extremely easy to use. Uh, let's go ahead, get into a combat example and check it out. All right, so we're about to get into a combat example. As you can see, I got a bunch of buffs on me. All of them I've casted on my very self. So we've got haste, false life greater, protection from arrows, regular false life uh, blur, bark skin, reduced person. You're only able to cast them for um, 20 minutes at this level or basically one minute per level. But still, you have them and you can put them to greater use. It just means you have to be a little bit more strategic 
about when you go ahead and burn those slots. We also have the disorienting injuries that we discussed before that is going to make it significantly easier for us to be able to get through enemy defenses as long as we can hit them at least once with a sneak attack. Um, we also have Master Strike, which you get from the Underground Chemist. It's going to uh, allow you to try to do a death effect on a particular creature. This is not going to work often on anything other than trash mobs, but you have it for those times when it does work. And as you can see, we have 74 bombs, which should be by far all that you need to be able to get through even a long dungeon without having to rest specifically to recharge your bombs. So once again, reiterating from the last time, this is why I don't bother taking any arrow feats. You shouldn't be shooting arrows. You should be throwing bombs every time you get a chance, point blank period. All right, all that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so let's look at the log. Because I was stealth, it allowed me to go ahead and do a free hit, essentially, on that creature. And I'm just going to keep throwing bombs until it's dead. So the very first bomb was a sneak attack. And looks like it did about 103 damage. So that is the real advantage of starting with the 20 in dexterity and then just leaving it alone. As you can see, the target's touch AC was 16. So that our 47 base attack bonus is way, way, way more than that. So even rolling a two, we still were easily able to cut through his defenses. That's why you put so much energy into intelligence. That's going to boost up your damage where you really need to be focused. And then the saving throw failed. We did an additional uh, 29 damage. And when we hit again, we also hit with sneak attack. And you see now, the second time when we went to hit, Bewildering in Injury has lowered the AC by eight. So now we're trying to beat eight, not even the um, 16 that we would have needed to be before. It's just making it very, very simple, not only for us to cut through defenses, but also imagine what the rest of your team is gonna be able to do with those type of penalties. Also, just to be clear, this is on unfair. So this is going to work really no matter what difficulty it is you're playing on. Let's go ahead and go to the next round. All right, two creatures right next to me uh, now, but one of them tried to uh, uh, bite me, but because I'm concealed, it missed. Let's go ahead and see what happens when we throw on bombs this time. In fact, we'll do it with the one right next to us. All right. So. First one was a, a sneak attack that hit. Did 103 damage. Then we did another 29. We hit his strength, hit his constitution. Um, hit again. Uh, and again, it was a sneak attack. So this time it was 84 damage. Another 29. We had a critical miss, unfortunately. But still hit with another 29, 29 and then still hit the strength and constitution and then finally we got a critical hit sneak attack which dealt 150 damage to Nab nabasu and dealt another 58 damage and it died so that's this right there is 200 let's say 250 275 so what yeah we're looking at easily for over 400 damage and again this is on unfair and I forgot to mention, you can see how much the, the Dorachni was damaged because it was close when I was throwing out these bombs as well. So in fact, some of those damage numbers probably applied um, to the Dorachni and not even to the, yeah. So, so, so the Dorachni is taking splash damage while I'm still attacking the Nabasu. Just great, great stuff. And then finally we go ahead, deal with you. And again, that was uh, very, very simple. Sneak attack once again, 92 damage, and it still hit 
um, both the strength and constitution. So as you can see, this character is absolutely fantastic for buffs, bombs, damage, debilitating enemies, and just about everything that you're going to need. And one more time, obviously it is a skills monster. Will be able to handle anything that is thrown at your team. Just all around, the white wolf slides right into any situation and makes it happen. So, hope you all enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything you would have done differently or if you feel like there's something I could do to improve upon it. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like down below, share this content, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next video. Take care.